is the cube root of 8x to the fifth y squared z cubed. So what you can think about this is, uh, go ahead and break down the number into its prime factors. So I'm just going to make a factor tree here, and you can see that 8 is made up of 2 times 2 times 2. But when you're taking the cube root, what you want to do is you want to look for 3 of the same quantity. So you can see we've got 2 times 2 times 2, that's like 2 cubed, but the cube root of 2 cubed is just 2. So you can see you get 2, and now let's go ahead and look at the variable. So x to the fifth is really like 5 x's multiplied together, but we're looking for groups of 3 since we're taking the cube root. That's like x cubed, the cube root of x cubed is just x. So for each group of 3, you just get one of that quantity. We've got 2 left over, that's going to stay underneath the radical here, the x times x is x squared. Here we're looking for groups of 3 with the y's, but you can see we only have two y's, so we don't have enough to make a group of 3, that stays underneath the radical. And then here we're looking for a group of 3 with z cubed, you can see that's z times z times z. So we have a group of 3, that's going to be z with none left over, and you've simplified it. So for this video, we're assuming that all variables are positive. Okay, for number 2 now, let's see if we can do this one. We're looking at the fourth root of 64 a b to the 8th c to the 11th. So same idea, I would break down 64 into its prime factors. Okay, so you did this a long time ago. And then now you're looking for the fourth root, so you're looking for groups of four, okay, of the same number. Now make sure to just take the numbers that are at the ends of these branches, but you can see this group of four here is like two to the fourth. The fourth root of two to the fourth is two. Again, for each group, you're just gonna get one of that quantity on the outside of the radical, and we're left with 2 times 2, which is 4. That's going to stay underneath the radical. That's like our remainder. Now we're looking for groups of 4 with the variables. So I'm, we've got a to the first. That's only 1a. We're looking for groups of 4. We don't have enough, so that stays underneath. Here we've got 8, b to the 8th. So we're looking for groups of 4. That's going to be b squared. You can see 4 goes into 8 twice with none left over. Same thing with the c's. We've got 4 goes into 11 twice with 3 left over. So you just take that uh, index here, see how many times it goes into the exponent. That comes out in front of the radical and whatever's left over stays underneath and you've got it. So let's look at the last example now. This one, for 3 here, we're taking the square root of 20x to the first y cubed z to the 12th. Now if you don't see a number up here, it's understood to be a square root, so you can put a 2 there if you'd like. But we're going to follow that same process. We're going to break down the number into its prime factors. Since we're taking the square root, we're looking for groups of 2 of the same number to uh, find a perfect square. So that's going to represent 2, because this is like 4. Square root of 4 is 2. And then we have a 5 left over. Now if there was a 5 and a 3 left over, we'd multiply those together. That'd be 15, which would stay underneath the radical. Here we don't have enough to make a group of 2 with the x's. That's going to stay underneath the radical. Here 2 goes into 3 once with 1 left over and 2 goes into 12 six times, so that's z to the 6 with none left over, and you've got it. So this has been Mario with Mario's Math Tutoring. If you want to see more uh, videos regarding simplifying radicals, check out the next video I did right there, and I'll see you over in that video.